Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where I talk about shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fiction genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of the originals, as well as the season finale of Grimm. So first, starting off with this uh, season finale of um, the originals, I really liked it. I didn't know what really direction everything was going to take. Um... I did like the fact is that essentially, you know, the fact is it was Cole and Elijah that got bitten. I mean, because, you know, this whole prophecy thing was coming true. And, you know, it got, you know, Nick, he was worried. He's like, no, don't worry, Cole. I'll save you. And Cole's like, didn't you say the same exact thing to Finn before he died? And it's just like, you know, especially Elijah, you know, it, that hits him even more, too, because it's like, because I did like that, though. Like, because once that happened and they were they were kind of like going at Mar Marcel but it was just like he was just toying with them and bit them and just when that happened you kind of saw like like a, a Klaus kind of all like super like soup up like he's about ready to go and then pops in you know who Rebecca I thought that's kind of neat that she ended up stopping him but the plan was basically I mean because I like you don't actually know what the plan is all you know is like Freya's like okay I have a plan but basically the trick is because it's just like, Klaus, you have to go stand on trial and basically buy me time until I can fix this whole situation up. It's the only way to save them because there's no cure for whatever Marcel is because she doesn't have the power to stop him, nor is there an existing cure for his bite. And so but I found that whole trial situation very interesting. Obviously, it was mainly, um, well, I mean, he thought it was kind of um, poetic because basically, like, uh, the Michaelsons have never given anyone else a fair trial, so it's always been strict to execution, judge, jury, and execution, or just kind of skip over, you know, just giving them a fair chance type of situation. So he's like, to be kind, he's going to kind of give Klaus a chance. And basically, Klaus had to confront a lot of the people he's kind of wrong in the past. It was very interesting because it's like, you always hear about the evil and the horrors that uh, Klaus has committed, but now you kind of put a face to them. Uh, he, um... Uh, Basically, one like one example. What was it? A, a girl like she had tu like tuberculosis or something like that, and her like it was two sisters, and one sister was sick and was coughing, and the coughing was annoying Klaus so much, so he turned both of them and he w watched. He made the other sister watch as he burned the other one alive, uh, something like that. And there was a guy that Klaus wanted his land, so he turned the guy and then had the um. It was it was either that guy or Klaus himself burn. Uh, killed his entire family just because he wanted the land. He could have easily just compelled him and took it, but he went around in a bloody path. It's like, yeah, we already know Klaus wasn't the nicest of person. Like over the course of those thousand years, and you know, no matter no amount of changing he's done now, like being a little bit of a different person, no shape or form is that going to make up for the bad stuff he's doing. But at the very least, he's trying. He won't admit it, but you know, he does regret the things he's done in his past because everything he's ever done has been out of fear. And like I said, I, I bring the comparison because they are very much alike. It's him and Damon because they both kind of like, they play the bad guy role very well. Because basically to get Marcel to do what he did, he was basically like, oh, pointing them all out. Be like, oh, yes, that basically telling them that they're no different from him. That I mean, that basically he made them into what they are. He's like, so what if I did this and that to you? I made you immortality. It gave you immortality. I gave you the strength you have now, so you should be grateful for me, grateful to me. Like that, basically, because of all he's bestowed upon them, they're in his debt. And that basically, no matter what they do, even if they kill him, that at the end of the day, he's still going to win because the scales outweigh what's happening. Because it's like you, you to claim I've put you all through this pain and suffering, but it's like so what? Like the moment you kill me, it's like it would be. A bliss release and you'll have to be stuck with this whole situation and so Marcel gets it in his head that basically he's going to adapt, use that uh, special knife that basically wants to put in someone basically it puts them in a state of just kind of being um I forgot what really what it, it, you know it traps you inside your own mind you're kind of being tormented and you're in constant pain essentially and basically saying Klaus will stay like that until uh, he deems otherwise he will be the one to kill him and so basically with that, Freya enacts a spell that puts her, Cole, Rebecca, and Elijah to sleep so that they, you know, w what she compares it to is the uh, same spell that their aunt used on her and Freya to keep them alive, you know, to, 
uh, to keep them young as well as to keep them alive through all this, you know, time, even though they're, even though they're just humans, even though they're witches and kind of having the life, essentially the lifespan of a vampire. So it's essentially using the same spell and basically use, you know, Klaus as a anchor. And it was just kind of like, you know, and Rebecca was a little sad about it because she's like, he sacrificed, Klaus sacrificed himself. Like, he knew the type of situation. He forced the situation so that, like, you know, kind of forced Marcel's hand to kind of put in a position and be like, oh, you want to kill me swiftly. Wouldn't it be better if you made me suffer? And he's like, there's no telling how long it's going to take for her because it's up to Haley. She has to look out for hope while keeping them safe while she finds a cure. And it's like, what like when it's all said and done what's gonna like happen in that regard like it's like who knows how long that's gonna take and he's gonna be stuck suffering like that because it's very interesting because when we see the end of the episode it doesn't seem like marcel is actually going after them i mean truth be told is there on a run so i don't know whether he i guess he doesn't even know where to begin looking for them or he doesn't care it's like now that they're going and he i mean really the main person his vengeance was after was klaus but it's like you know he still has his hatred for uh, Elijah, the main ones he can I mean, he has a bit of hate towards Cole too, because Cole's the reason why Davina is dead. If he had just left and not, you know, stayed in town, it wouldn't have happened. She wouldn't have been dead in the first place. That's kind of what he was saying. But out of anyone, he loved her the most. So, and you know, we kind of get peeks back and forth into Marcel's upbringing. You know, how Klaus was the one that gave him a name and took him in as his son. How Elijah, you know, taught him to. Uh, play the piano he's like oh, Marcel's like oh it's kind of hard I'll never get this he's like oh you said the same thing about reading so it's showing like the two people in the family that meant the most to him growing up who were like parents to him um parents uncle brother and then you know having Rebecca being the woman he ended up falling in love with in that whole situation because I mean that came up though it's like because I was wondering about that it's like how is he going to feel about that like because the fact is you're kind of pissed at the Michaelsons let's not forget Rebecca's one but it's kind of like he's like you know I'm not I'm gonna leave you alone my gripe is essentially only with your brothers and particularly Freya even though he never really did anything other than poison Freya that was kind of the fullest extent of what he did. I'm surprised he didn't come after her. I guess mainly his vengeance was just aimed specifically at Klaus. And like I said, the shame part of it is like Klaus had nothing to do with Davina dying. He was completely against him doing that. And, you know, Elijah was like, no, like, you know, it's not even Klaus's fault. He's like, he doesn't even blame Marcel. He's like, he's the one that brought this up on their family by doing what he did. Because um, he essentially says, like... Uh, he he had said that he didn't regret it before because he made that he had no choice because he will do whatever it takes to protect his family and Klaus was like I I know that burden well it's a very heavy burden to bear and he but then um, Elijah was like it's a, he's a, he's like it's a burden I'm afraid that's too much for I don't know specifically himself or was he talking about Klaus or their family in general it being a burden too hard for them to bear. And it was just very sweet when you got to hear that note that he had left for Hope. That uh, basically he's like, don't worry about me. Just know that your mom will do whatever she can to reunite our family. He's like, I'm sorry that I can't be there with you, but know that your mom will do whatever it takes to protect you and restore our family. And like I said, I just find it interesting. In fact, is I don't know if that's going to be something... I don't know if this show's getting renewed for another season. I'm hoping... I'm crossing my fingers and hoping it does. But it's like... I don't know whether... if, if it, Like something I think would be very interesting to see in the next season would be, like, the fact is, either Marcel still hunting them, like, still having vampires go out trying to hunt them down, because <clears throat> I don't think he's going to do it himself. He's probably going to stay, you know, and kind of enjoy the, the uh, throne, even though there's kind of animosity between him and Vincent. Him and Vincent were on the same wavelength at first, but now Vincent sees him as a threat because it's like, seeing the way he handled the tricks, because he ended up killing them all. And at first I was kind of like, and, you know, looking back after the episode, I was like, why did he kill the Strix? I was like, did he have a vendetta consent? And I was like, oh, I, I was like, stupid. Of course, what he killed the Strix because the Strix would be a front line of defense for Elijah because they are still sired to him. So they feel the need to protect him. So it's like, go ahead and get them out of the way first. So it looks like he killed all of them. And interestingly enough, it's like, what are they going to do with that cop here? You know, I still have forgot his name, but he's the dude that's uh, Cammy's friend, the cop, who got kind of brought into this whole world. We see him getting bitten by a vampire, and that's kind of the end of that. But it's like, what do they plan on doing with him now that he knows this whole situation? I'm guessing, like, he's going to kind of take 
over Cammy's role, kind of as being like the human who knows what's going on, you know, vampires, werewolves, as well as witches, which is very interesting when you actually break it down and think about it. No, it's like the werewolves have disappeared from this picture. Um, it's mainly just kind of turned into mainly a vampire werewolf, I mean, vampire witch thing, which is kind of what it kind of started off at at the beginning, too. But, you know, um, Vince was talking about making a sanctuary, it's like for vampires, for werewolves, uh, witches, whoever, you know, a safe place, you know, basically he's tired of the same old same old because he says Marcel, the way he handled everything is essentially, he's no different from Klaus, like no matter how much he preaches and claims to be different, he's deep down, he's just the same, just as bloodthirsty as well as sloppy because he was like, I would do whatever it takes to get rid of the Michelson, so, but, but I was thinking like, you know, because this could take how because I was all because I brought this up, I was like wondering at what they were going to do. Or well, the fact is that the um the Vampire Diaries has skipped for three years. That's kind of the present time. So I was wondering what was the originals going to do because even though you know they're two separate stories, they kind of the stories kind of coexist. So I was wondering like what they were going to do with it. But this could be their way of getting around that. It's like we'll cut back and it's been a couple years. Uh, we'll see maybe hopes like a little bit older. Or something like because it makes me wonder like what, what they could do with that. It could be like oh it's only been a couple months, or they could they could push it hard and make it like it's been years that they've been on the run, or at least maybe like two or three years, kind of put it along the same, well specifically three years to kind of put it alongside the Vampire Diaries, or they could make it a little shorter, a little more. It's like there's no telling what they could really do with that. Because it'd be interesting to see like what will Hope be like when she gets older. Like she is. You know, the child of an original and a werewolf. So it's like, she is special in her own regard. So I forgot. I mean, it's, I'm most likely being brought up before, but like, is she, will she grow up and become a hybrid? Is that how that will work? I'm not sure, like, what she'll be when she grows up. So it'd be kind of interesting to see that regards. And it'd be kind of interesting to see how New Orleans will be now that um, Klaus and the Michelsons are out of the way. Um, where they be kind of a new players in town kind of trying to stir up trouble. It's like, you know, I mean, because at this point in time, Marcel cannot be touched by anybody. Because I did worry, I was like, well, what about the fact is that we have the ancestors getting involved? It's like, well, they're cut off from this realm, so it's like not even possible for them to even control Marcel. But uh, something I also wonder, because, you know, that never really was 100% dealt with. It's like Aurora's body. It's like, is she still in a position that she could end up coming back? I don't think they're ever going to bring her back. But it's like her and Tristan still exist. I mean, it's like if they wanted to, uh, you know, Marcel could track down their bodies and, and easily just end up killing them now. And just kind of be done with it. But, um... Because I feel like the fact is Aurora has never really been dealt with on screen. It means like her and Tristan are going to come back in some shape or form and be uh, pestilence. But it's like, what will happen now? Like, will there actually be peace in, you know, the quarter now that the Michaelsons are gone? Because like, you know, like no one's going to dare cross Marcel because he's literally the most powerful being like around. No witch can stop him. Uh, no vampire can uh, top, stop him neither because uh, one bite from him could instantly kill anybody, even the strongest of vampires. But, uh, yeah, just something, like, you know, bouncing around in my head, I think it'd be pretty neat. Um, you know what, like I said, but once again, it's just like that sacrifice Klaus made. And it's just like, you could tell by the way he was talking and the way he was acting, like, it did affect him, like, having to face all the bad stuff he's done. But it's like, for his, for his family to do everything whatever it takes to protect him, he, he, you know, he will dive to the deepest parts of hell just to, you know, uh, protect his family, and it's like, and it shows you in this situation, you know, um, uh, he even, like, you know, apologized to Haley that time, I thought that was kind of sweet, being like, how he apologized, because at one point he sought to take hope away from her, but she, he's like, I now realize that that's a mistake, he's like, I, I believe in you, I know that you'll protect our daughter, and just, I don't know, because, like, initially, Elijah wanted him to be like, okay, if, you know, when this, when this, you know, wolf bite takes me, I want you to take uh, Haley and Hope and you get as far away from here as possible. And, you know, it's just like, you know, you see Klaus kind of a little shaking. He's like, I don't, I don't know if I can do this without you, brother. It's just, I don't know. It's, it does, I, I, Davina is quote unquote gone, but it's like, I don't know if I 100% believe that, because I still believe that the ancestors had a bigger 
plan for her than just like I said, I don't know whether they were trying to set this whole thing in motion and whether that was kind of their plan, but I feel like they had special reasons for doing what they did to Davina. And I don't think it was just that which is personal vendetta. I think it's they had some secret plan. And I'm curious like what that is. Like we've seen her cut off the ties to the ancestors to this realm, but it's like what if they had some other plan that they're kind of still working on and just no one knows what's going on? Many questions that I hope, you know, if the show gets renewed for another season, hopefully we you get some of those answers. And now moving on to the season finale of Grimm, which was pretty amazing. Uh, hands down, one of my favorite parts was the fact is we got uh, Renard and Nick going at it. Uh, sadly, it ended up with Nick uh, getting arrested. But I mean, I mean, like Renard deserved that because like that freaking the, just a cascade of events. Uh, Hank being arrested. I was like, oh, this is total BS. It's like that neighbor's lying. It's like, oh yeah, the neighbor's dead, and that those cops are actually um, Vessin. They're actually part of Black Claw. And I, I was like, holy crap! Now, like, because when Nick went to the um that uh, uh um, precinct looking for Hank and ended up finding out a lot of those cops there are Vessin. I interpreted that as two different ways, like as like, oh, they're part of Black Call, or just because they're vests and they're like, oh, we know you're the Grim, so we're not going to help you out, just because like there's a new revolution on board. Not necessarily that they're with Black Claw, just that they would do anything just to spite him because he's a Grim. Because you know, like it's probably gotten out now, because all across the place, because uh, there were pictures taken of uh, Nick and as well as everyone that's close to him, that you know. Means that everyone knows that he's the Grim now. Like probably all Vessin that are involved will know he's the Grim, so they'll be coming after him directly. But uh, dude, I was kind of expected. It's just like just that whole like Meisner situation, dude. That suck. That guy Comrad was there, and he was like making Meisner suffer because uh, Renard was kind of like, oh, you can. It doesn't have to be this way. Like you can join us. He's like, uh, he's like th this whole Black Claw situation is only a Vessin situation. He's like, oh, that can change. But uh, Conrad was like, no, that there's no room for him. And it was starting to do that. It was kind of making him suffer. And because Sean was a friend of his in some regards, he ended up shooting him just to make it, you know, end. And um, Conrad was like, oh, that, that compassion of yours could prove to be a problem later on. So it's like, on some levels, you're kind of like, okay, that was that was nice of Renard. To, you, know, he, you know, he still cared for Meisner as a friend that he, you know, put him down. Which, side note. Never crossed my mind that Meisner was human. I don't know why. It's like, I guess it, if he was a uh, Vessin at any point in time, he would have vogued. But it's like, I just, I didn't never cross my mind he was human until until that happened. I was like, he's freaking human. It's like, that is kind of interesting because we have never seen him vogue before. So I just thought it was just, that was just kind of his preference. It just, it never crossed my mind. I never thought that was strange or anything. I definitely know that's got to suck for Adeline, you know, because she ended up hearing the truth about Meisner being dead and Renard kind of being behind it. Because she actually cares for Meisner, because Meisner got her and Diana out of you know, the out of the clutches of the Royals. Uh, what was that back in season three? That happened, you know. I think it was like a little bit after she had given birth to Diana. So Meisner was a big help to her. He protected her and everything. So, you know, she probably looks to him. You know, looked to him and thought like, you know, it's like he was someone very nice that she cared about. And also, side note, like, uh, with the whole HW thing going down, like, we see Trouble kind of breaking down. She's, like, super sad about it. And it, I guess because it never clicked in my brain, it's like, you know, Trouble's kind of been, like, moving from place to place. The only other place she's ever really known as home was with Nick and Juliet. But it's like, other than that, like, HW has been her home for a while now, for the past couple months. And, you know, she's kind of enjoyed working with Meisner and doing the good work that they're doing. And looked at him as an ally and a friend and like I said HW was her home it's like they came in killed all the people she was working with and you know killed him and destroyed her home and on some level it was very interesting because we kind of see Eve kind of reacting to that because there was those uh, two vests and that were outside of Monroe's place that she like used her powers and they were talking about they were getting hot they were heating up and it looks like their bodies explode inside the truck I can only I interpret that as like you know because Eve liked Meisner because Meisner gave her purpose. He all this work that they were doing, like it was kind of like her main focus. She was kind of like um, I don't know what the word is, but she was kind of pushed into like uh, 
pushing away her Juliet personality and becoming Eve. He gave her purpose. He gave her a mission. So I guess in some regards, he uh, he helped her become the person she is and not, you know, kind of get away from who she was. So I'm guessing she kind of on some level probably uh, cared for him for doing that. She probably appreciated that. And just like, because she was actually sad. She's like, if I was here, she could have made a difference because they wanted Eve away. That's what the whole Hank situation was. Because it, it's like, it's those poor uh, black claw bastards not even realizing that they were meant to be sacrificed. It's just in case, you know, they came to rescue Hank, you know. Uh, we also had uh, Diana, like, kicking up, like, the psycho levels a little bit. Uh, manipulating Adeline and Renard to kind of, like, uh, get together. They're making out, kind of about to strip off the clothes. And then, like, Adeline's like, no, 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 no. Don't you see what's happening here? And then Renard's like, what? She's, she's like, you idiot. Obviously, this is Diana doing this. Did you actually seriously think I was going to, like, I'm just, could, like, ripping off my clothes, couldn't wait to have sex with you? He's like, I, I am the mayor now. I was like, what? What does that mean? That doesn't change anything, you idiot. You sound like a moron saying that. She's like, she even has that look on her face like, you idiot. What is what is wrong? Are you really this stupid? Uh, they actually think that, you know, because no, the way, with the way things are, she still cares for Nick. Which is a very good thing that Diana doesn't know about that. Because the way she handled Rachel, it's like, I kind of meant to bring this up last episode. But it's like, she just kept giving Rachel the death stare. Because Rachel kept interfering. She uh, interfered with her plans of getting mommy and daddy back together. And just wrapped her up in that blanket and suffocated her. It's like, she doesn't, doesn't even have to be near her. And just that just shows you just how scary, powerful Diana is. And it just seems like... Probably the more time that goes on, she'll get just stronger and stronger. And it's like, she'll do anything. Uh, just because, I mean, because I get, because it makes sense on some level because she is a kid. And it's like, honestly, what would you expect when a kid has amazing powers? They're bound to, they're going to have tantrums and they're going to do what they want to. It's like, they see things as like, oh, they need to be this way. So they're going to use their powers to make it so. So I'm like, I'm saying it's lucky that Nick doesn't know. I mean, that Diana knows the situation because she knows that Kelly is his son so but she doesn't know the fact is that mommy and nick kind of have that type of relationship i feel like if she did she wouldn't have given her um nick that message warning about the fact is that they knew that they knew that she was that adeline kind of accidentally gave him gave his address to them and i thought it was uh, very interesting that you know because i feel like she would have like if she knew she'd probably try and kill nick to me, in my mind, when it was when in in just just a random thought I had, it, I thought it'd be kind of funny if when it's all said and done, they end up becoming a family and like Nick, Diana, Adeline, and Kelly, and it's just like thinking about all the times like it's like oh Nick's trying to struggle dealing with Diana being able to do whatever she wants so with her powers and trying to you know parent her a little bit. That was just something weird that kind of popped into my mind. Another favorite part of mine in this episode was the whole situation with Tony because he needed to get information on where to find Hank. And if all uh, Rosalie in, and he's talking about, oh, like, you look so pretty when you're mad, blah, 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 being a jerk, trying to, like, act cool. And then Monroe is like, oh, I guess I haven't introduced you. This is Rosalie's husband, Monroe. And then Monroe kind of vogues out on him, like, slaps him around. You hear his stuff in the room, and um, Wu's kind of like, okay, when do we go in? And he's like, okay, now. And he goes in, and then uh, Monroe's got their date, and um, Nick's like, thank you. And then Monroe's like, no, no. Thank you. I was like, oh, you can go, Monroe. Just like he needed to, he needed to vent some of his anger. Which, speaking of Monroe and Rosalie, we end up finding out, Rosalie ends up finding out she's pregnant, which is pretty awesome. She just, she's like, I can never, I couldn't find the right time to really tell you with everything going on. He's like, no, it doesn't matter. He's like, with everything going on, this is exactly the right time to tell me. It's like, his goodness. It's like, oh, they're, they're going to be a family, Papa Monroe and Mama Rosalie. That's so awesome. I mean, granted, no one else knows, but still, that's pretty awesome. Uh, what else uh, did I like about this? I like that um, how Nick handled himself in that situation. I thought it was pretty brave. I mean, basically, you know, d doing the hero thing that basically he went off and sh uh, sent everyone down the um, tunnels, uh, you know, while he bought them time by himself, basically took on pretty much every vessel that came there. Uh, single handedly, uh, he got a little banged up. He got shot multiple times. Uh, one was kind of a non-fatal wound, but he did get shot twice. And uh, there were two, there were the two particular cops that, you know, he kind of kept coming across in these episodes. I'm kind of glad he took them down because they were just so arrogant and full of himself and it just kind of irked my nerves in that regard. But it's like one got a knife to the, uh, uh, 
thrown at his face and the other one kind of got slashed up by an axe. But it seems like he uh, literally shot Nick twice and Nick had a stick on him and it ended up healing him. So it's like, to me, I'm still interpreting that as like the stick doesn't work for just anyone. I feel like it's only Grimm's that can use the stick because it was hidden away by the original like some uh night uh some grims back in the crusade uh during the first crusade so i can only interpret it as maybe it can only be used by grims i mean maybe we really don't know what it is 100 percent capable of, but we did see very interestingly enough when um he tried to heal uh eve it ended up like she kind of had a reaction she vogued and then she kind of turned back to normal it seems whatever happened to her i mean we haven't really gotten a look at it just based on the way she was acting and even nick caught he's like juliet she's like tearing up and everything about and then she's like because even um trouble asked her is like how do you feel what do you feel and she's like everything meaning she's juliet now like everything she was suppressing suppressing as eve because she that's a, like she talked about it before like she didn't want to ever kind of go down that route of like oh how would Juliet react to this because it would open up those sore wounds and she wouldn't know I guess in her mind she wouldn't know she'd be able to close that door once open so in this regard it, you know from what it seems it seems like the stick also healed her um you know being a hex and beast possibly I don't know if she's 100% like that's 100% gone or is she back to being a normal human or is it that you know she still retains her powers but the Eve personality is gone because you know that was kind of all based around her powers and, and her hex and bees I guess it was more so like they suppressed her natural personality and they kind of uh, focused more on hardening the hardening the uh, hex and beast personality inside of her I guess to kind of more temper it to be a weapon a cold calculating weapon so it does make you wonder, like, it would be quite interesting to see, like, is that what that means? And it, and if that's the case, does that mean a stick could be used to heal uh, Wu from his situation? Which, like I said, I knew he was going to, I mean, I, he still didn't do it in this episode, but, like, eventually he's going to start using that as a weapon. It's like, he went up against those two vests and he kind of kicked in overdrive, ended up killing them. Uh, he was going after Hank for a little while, but Hank had to, you know, talk to me and talk, kind of calm him down, and he kind of reverted back to his normal state, so. Because uh, I did wonder, like, maybe, like, I think it only happens, like, maybe it can help Wu, because both of their situations, they're not natural-born vests. I mean, because even in Wu's case, he's still not a vest, and he's just something else entirely, but in... Juliet's case, she became a vessel because of that uh, spell, essentially. So it's like, so maybe in her body, or it treats, it heals all diseases slash wounds, and maybe it treats her vessel powers as a hexen beast. Maybe it treats that more like a virus, you know. Whereas in most uh, vessel, it's just a natural thing because it didn't do that to uh, Monroe. It didn't affect him in that regard. So, so it has to specifically be tied to the fact is that her powers as a hexen beast were kind of treated like a disease. So. But like I said, we didn't really get to see whether or not she still has those powers or not, or whether it was just her personality as Juliet kind of reverting back to normal. Which, like I said, will make things very, very interesting from now on. It's like, because it's like, ooh, there's that Adeline and Nick romance, but it's like, if she's back to being Juliet, that's still the woman Nick fell in love with, you know? It's like, granted, there's, you know, some hard time, there's some stuff that went down that, you know, I mean, she didn't kill his mom, but I mean, she essentially helped set her mom to be up in the situation to be killed. So, but in that regard, it's just like, I don't know, like, you know, even if she was Juliet, there's no guarantee things would ever go back to the way they are. Like I said, I, I don't know. It's a very, it'd be a very interesting love triangle I'd like to see. But I did like how everything ended with, we had uh, Sean killing, um... Conrad, obviously it wasn't, you know, his choice. Diana made him do it because Diana found out that um, she's a pretty smart girl. So she quickly figured out that he was the one that hurt her mom. So she wanted him dead. So there we have it. We have Renard standing in front of him. And it's just like, cut to black to be continued. And it's just like, where would they go with that? Because it's like, you know, he's still pissed at Renard for everything. Renard just saved his life. Granted, it wasn't by his own choice, but still. 
And, you know, because if Nick does anything to Sean, like, he's going to have to suffer Diana's wrath. And there's also that ring that um, Adeline's kind of forced to wear. Apparently, like, he said that if she took it off, it would lead to trouble for her children. So either it's kind of, like, cursed or whatever, or, you know, maybe he maybe it's symbolic, meaning, like, if the moment she removes it, uh, he will, like... You know, it was like symbolic and metaphorical, like he'll do something or it will literally do something because it's tied to them. To the moment she takes it off, something happens to him. I don't know. Because it did seem like that dude had like some weird powers because he did something to Adeline when he was touching her. He kind of made her, um, what is it? He made her, uh, like turn to stone or wood or something like that. And he also made Nick hallucinate all that stuff. I think. When it comes to Sean, Sean is like a Zalber Beast, half half Zalber Beast, half Hexen Beast, if I'm correct. And I think Conrad is like a full Zalber Beast, so he's like the full version of what Sean is. If I'm correct, I could be 100% wrong on that. I'm not the well-versed in Vessen. I'm not, like, it's like, I can, like, I literally only know one Vessen's name, Blue Bods, because it's just the easiest one to remember. It's the one that comes up the most often, in my opinion, but it's like, I don't know. But a very interesting season finale. Uh, once again, not sure if the show is being renewed for another season, but I hope it is. Cause, but I just like I'd be so interested to see where we go from here. Because something else that needs to be considered too is the fact is that now the HW is done. That has been dealt with. Like it's literally up to the team to fight against Black Call. But it's like, how do you fight something that big, that widespread? You know, because you got vesting all over the place in different forms of authority and it's like you know they're kind of like you know they're kind of you know it's like oh there's a new rule going around it's like oh we've got uh the new mayor so it means we're going to be like following a new set of rules so it's like regular people are probably going to be in trouble that you know Vesson are going to kind of go on a hunt and not really care as much you know they're not going to hide in the shadows anymore they're going to come out in the light i mean some will probably remain as they are obviously but others will not uh, cause we, um, it ended up, you know, I almost kind of completely skipped over the fact is Conrad ended up saying that he wanted the book, the book that Nick got, that grim book that, uh, Nick got from, um, uh, Monroe's uncle. Basically, it has all the names of all the Grimms, living or dead, that basically he can go around. Basically, Conrad wanted to know their names so that basically he can go to those Grimms and present them the choice that, you know, essentially they were presenting to Nick originally, like, join us or die, essentially. It's like they want Grimms on their side because, you know, make them more powerful it'll show them it's like oh we have grims on our side we can't be stopped neither it's like the full force of our might you know is vesson coming together and then having grims on our side so it'd be very interesting to see like how do you fight an enemy like this when when the only organization that was around to stop them is going to was i guess I, I thought HW was a lot bigger than what it is. Because what about the whole resistance? Like, is HW all that's remaining of the resistance? So was they, were they completely wiped out? Were they just solely in Portland? I was thinking, you know, because I was under the impression HW was a much wider system, like a much wider group. But maybe they were actually wiped out, you know, at the same time the Portland place was hit. But I feel like if that was the case, we would have seen that too, would have heard more about it. So I, I'm guessing HW was only solely there. So it's like, like I said, it'd be interesting to see where they go from there. Like, how will you face off against this enemy when uh, everything's the way it is? But that's really all I wanted to talk about in this episode. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.